this episode, we'll look at working with subdomains, and one of the easiest things to do when having to work with subdomains is to use a service like PumaDev. So with PumaDev, we can call PumaDev link dash n for name, and then give it a name. So in our case, I'm just going to call this example, and then we're going to reference our current working directory, which is the Rails application. And once we do this, we can also restart the service, which this will just force kill the Puma Dev service. This will ensure that the Puma Dev service is starting, and then we'll just tail our development log. And what this will do is give us a domain name that we can then access our Rails application, and it'll start up automatically. So we can go to example.dev, but then also notice that we can put in a www for a subdomain name, and then we can also access any of these other different subdomain names. You can see that we're using a different subdomain name, and then we're accessing a different multi-tenant part of the application. And the nice thing about this is that it'll automatically work with HTTPS support. So if you need to test this behind a TLS SSL, you're able to simply just add in the HTTPS. You may have to install the certificate provided by Puma Dev, but that shouldn't be too difficult. So the first thing that we can do is set a global helper in our application controller. And this is just going to be our current blog, and we'll use memoization to find the blog by the subdomain name, and then we can access the subdomain name with request.subdomain. And then we call helper method and then pass in the current blog. So whenever we visit a page, it'll return the current block if it's available. And each time we call current block within a view, it's not going to refetch the blog because we have a memoization here. And then we can also make it to where if someone enters in a invalid subdomain name, then we can redirect them back to the root path to then perform or sign up for an account. So here we'll have a before action, ensure subdomain name. We'll make a private method, ensure subdomain name, and then we'll redirect to the root URL. And notice that you can pass in a subdomain. And in this case, we're just giving it the string www unless the current blog. So if the current blog is not present, then you can redirect the user back to the main website. So where things get a little bit tricky is in our routes. So if no subdomain name or if a invalid subdomain name is present, then we want to only give the option for our resources blog to create a new one. And we also want to set a root path equal to the welcome index action. If someone does provide a valid subdomain name, then we want to give our resources blogs except for the index and new action. And then we have a nested resource with posts. And then we want to make our root path equal to the blog show. So in order to segregate these out, we do need access to our request environment, but then we can also wrap these within a constraint. So if we create a constraints do, we can then move our routes into this block, and we can do the same thing if the subdomain name is not present or if a invalid one is given. And then to perform our match, we can create a class, and I'm just gonna call this class subdomain routes. So if it returns true, then we will assume that they do not have a valid subdomain name, and it'll redirect them to the root path. If a valid subdomain name is present, then we'll give them access to these resources as well as the root path of showing the blog action. So in the config initializers, we'll create a subdomain routes.rb file. And within here, we'll create our class subdomain routes, and then we'll have a method self.matches request. And within this method, we can then do a check to see if the subdomain name is empty or if it is www, we can pass in true. Otherwise, we will return false. And so you can see if we refresh our page, we do not have any subdomain present. So we are on the welcome index action. However, if we pass in www, we would expect it to go to the same page. And let's say if we give it a fake domain name, www.asdf, and when we return this, it redirects us back to the www.example.dev. However, if we go to a valid subdomain name, so this is just some seeded data, then it should take us to the blog show action. And as you can see here, it did. If we scroll down, we can look at some of our routes. In this case, it takes us back to that root of the subdomain name. And then we can go back to our site home, which is just excluding any subdomain name. 
so that'll redirect us back to our main page. And our blocks controller is pretty standard. So with our before action, we set our block and we only do this on the show edit, update and destroy as we normally would. And if we look at that before action, you can see that we're just sending our instance variable blog equals to the current blog. However, if you remember in our before action in our application controller, we had to check on the insurer's subdomain name and we would need to avoid that on our new and our create actions because we don't have a valid subdomain name yet for those. So we can add a skip before action insure subdomain and we only want to do this on the new and create actions. And similar for our welcome controller, we also want to exclude the insurer subdomain name before action because we want the user to have access to this page without having that before action callback called. And then in our blog model, we want to create some kind of validation around our subdomain name. So we can create a validate subdomain name exclusion. So here we're saying that the www is a reserved keyword and it's not allowed to be used in the subdomain name. We also can create a custom message and then say that the presence is true, meaning that one must be entered. And then we have the uniqueness true where the subdomain name has to be unique so someone cannot use one that's already been used. And then we can create a before validation sanitize subdomain. And within this private method, we'll just set the subdomain equals to subdomain dot parameterize. And then within the show view of a blog, Let's have a look at the blog home and the site home paths. So you can see that the blog home has a link to the root path. However, the site home, we are saying root URL and then to the subdomain we're passing nil. And this is really important to use the underscore URL for the root path because we want to change the subdomain name. And this is the only way that you can do that. If you were to use root path, then the subdomain as well as the domain would remain the same. And then similar for our welcome index, we display the text for our link. And then our link is the root URL of our subdomain parameter we're setting to blog.subdomain. And this is just a loop through each one of the blogs. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.